And last night, yeah, they had a little thing last night in New York. Okay. Um, Tommy, we learned a little last night to, to catch up. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry that I missed it. Where'd you get to? We're holding now Chafalaf, Ahmed Aleph, Ketzad, Mishalemis, Mashinanis. We did a very, a very important sugya of Zanan of Zalei Chasa. We did a, a, a block. We did a Chaf. Chaf Chaf, Amud. Now we're on Chaf Aleph, Ahmed Aleph. 21. That was how far down the page? Oh, Ketzad, oh, so, Mishalemis. Uh, yeah, yeah, two thirds down. Okay. See that? I'm Chaval. That's him. Chaval from an alt kitchen, Michelin's machine. Okay. What's wrong? In the Mishnah, we said, I'm sorry, we thank Hashem that we're able to learn Torah every day. Is, is, is Hillel's online? Thank you for sending out a note last night, Hillel. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah, Hillel's here. Thank you. Thank Hashem that you're able to learn Torah every day, and then this chassid about learning, we should have the base of English immediately. Amen. The Mishnah we learned that there's a difference in when an animal consumes produce from some from uh, someone else. The owner has to pay. Depends where it was located. If it was in a rishus harabim, then he's pater, and if it's in a rishus hanizik, if the animal went entered into someone else's property and ate the produce from that property, then he has to pay for it. Now, uh, the Mishnah added in that um, even if he's exempt from paying, because it's in a public area, but he still has to pay. Still has to pay um, for the benefit that he got. We discussed that uh, last night, for the benefit. But that's not for the value of the damage. It's just how he saved money from not, um, from not having to serve his animal at lunch. So he has to pay for that benefit the price, price of straw or something. Now, another point to the Mishnah is that if it eats from the side of the road, that's considered Rosh Hashanah. It's only in the main street, main the center of the road, where that's considered the public area and he's exempt if the animal consumes. But if the animal goes to the side of the road, that is called Mitzidei Harachava, the side of the road, then he has to pay Mashi Zika what he damaged. For some, some reason, that's called Rosh Hashanah. That's one of the ways of learning this. So the, the quote, the Gemara quotes, how is it that he pays for what he benefits? And that's talking about that if he eats only in the middle of the road, he would pay for what he benefits. But if he eats from the side of the road, then he has to pay for the damage as well. Rav, Rav says, Rav says that even if the animal is in the entire body is in the, uh, is in the main road, but it turned its head to the side, and its head is in the side of the road, the animal's in the main road, turned its head to the side, that's already going to be chayev because it ate in the side of the road, which is considered the domain of the damagee. So Rashi, and I think our Rashi here, and Taisvas learn that it's considered chatzar nizek. That's the simple way of doing this. Um, there is another Rashi, which Taisvas quotes, where Rashi says, that the reason why he has to pay is because it's Karen, and that's an abnormal way of eating to to go to this, to, to turn to the side of the road and eat from the side yeah, of the road. It's Mishuna. Mishuna. Anyway, let's learn it that it's Chatzarnes. Shmuel Amar Afil Machzer Snami Pater. Shmuel says that even if he turns his head to eat, he's going to be Pater. He's going to be Pater. So the Gemara is going to ask, So in what case are you going to be Chayev according to Shmuel? Mishnah clearly said, that if you eat from the side of the road, you're going to be high if to pay. What a, so, but Shmuel says that if you turn your head, if the animal turns its head, it's going to be potter. So what case will be high? Talking about that it left the main road, and now it's totally in the side of the road. 
So either we would learn like the way Rashi and Tais was by us learn that um, when the animal is in the street, that's even though it turned its head, but it's still considered the street. But if it leaves the street, then it's considered the Rosh Hashanah. It's considered the domain of the damagee. And every um, shame is high of consumption, it's high. Or we could say that it's totally abnormal for the animal to be on the side of the road, and that's why it's high. Still, mm. Shmuel would still consider it normal for it to turn its head, like whatever. Um, some learn that this machlaik is not based on our mission, and they just had this independent uh, statement here that says, If an animal turns its head, Rav says that he's high, and Shmuel says that he's potter. Why is he potter? Because that's considered shame, it's considered consumption. Animals consuming the food in a public area. According to Shmuel, when would you, yes, be chayev? In the shop, so if he left the whole street and went to the side, so far so good. In the Mishnah, it says that if the animal eats from the entranceway to the store, it says that's still considered outside the store and that's considered the public area. And consumption of food in a public area is exempt. Shane Bishop Sarab. So, Echim Shkach, so what's the case? Shita B'Machzeres. We're assuming that the store is not in the center of the street. We're assuming that the store is on the side of the street. So, how did it eat from the side? How did it must it ate from the entrance of the store? It must have been that it turned its head and it ate. And nevertheless, it says clearly that you don't have to pay for the damage, you only have to pay for the benefit. So, the Ka'amar, Mashinanis. It's talking about that it turns and it only has to pay Mashinanis. It doesn't fit with Rav, it fits with Shmuel. Mashinanis in Mashizikaloi, that's a question on Rav, he doesn't have to pay for the damage. So, who might love whom a parakla? Rabbi Nachman Bayyitz asks the question and he answers. The Kaima Bekar and Zavis. It's talking about that it is in the center of the street. How do you have a store in the center of the street? So we're talking about that there's a wider road that's going into a more narrow road. So as the animal's walking on the wider road, as it gets to the narrow road, that the, at the corner, there would be a store there. And so it's considered not the side of the street, it's considered from this street, it's considered the middle of the street. So it didn't have to turn its head to get into that. Like, you like see it in the, uh, in the yeah. picture in Rashi. It looks, like, like, a, it looks like a picture of the Mizbeach, yeah. you know, with the ramp. But anyway, that's the, um, you probably have pictures in the Quran. You probably have yeah. pictures of animals and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Fancy pictures. Okay, okay. I don't see it. No, no, you're thinking. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, store entrance. Um, okay, where are we holding now? Ikadamri. Ikadamri, it's um, bottom of 21A. Bottom of 21A, it's about 10 lines from the bottom. Okay, get ready for uh, quite a sugi over here. Go through it quickly, but it's this is heavy stuff. It says like this there are those that say, Everyone holds that if it turns its head, that's considered chayev, that's considered shane in a rishus uh like we were saying with Rav. Everyone would hold like that. Okay. What's the machzeres? Machzeres is when it turns its head from the side of the road to the from the from this main road to the side of the road. So you're not using the second one. You should carry the mishnah. Um, I'm just that's like my head. Is Rashi has. Tysus. If you, you look at Rashi, Rashi uh, if you look at Tesis. Tesis towards the top, he says, Pirish Achish or Rashi, Pirish Machser, Shevs, Mishim Karen, the Mishino, then go down to Nira Lari. Tid de Rachva, Hashivi Chatzer Nisik. That's the two interpretations that you can learn this whole thing. You can either say that it's because of Karen. The difference is if you're Chayav Chatzi Nisik, Chayav Nisik Shalim. If it's Karen, yeah, there's two ways of learning this whole Gemara. Okay, so. Okay, whatever the case is, that um, now we're holding where everyone would really hold that Machseres is going to be high if it's considered, let's say, Rishos right? Let's say, that's the shot. 
Keep Ligi. So what's the Machlekes Rav and Shmuel? B'makta Makim Mereshusay L'Rishusa Rabim Bach Yitmar. Where someone has, it's hard to imagine someone doing this, if someone has a piece of property at the end of his field that he actually gives to the public to use. Maybe it's like a swale or something. I don't know. People, walk, right? people yeah. People, he, he gives it over to the public. And what he does is he leaves his fruits on that area. So we're discussing now, he owns the fruits, but he doesn't own the area. But he had permission to put it there because it was his. Because it was his. When he put it there, it was fine. Okay, so what happens is like this. Um, I'm a Rav. Rav says, Leishanu, when do we say Ella Machzeres? When do we say that Yechayev? That's only by Machzeres is Chayev, right? Aval Maksimakamir Shusay Lershusay Rabbim is Petura. But if the animal eats from fruits that were left on that little, um, we call it a uh, patch, little patch of land that he gave to the public, then the, the person that ate it is going to be put there. I think Mark's going to explain why. Right now, we have no clue what's going on. Like, so why? Okay. Shmuel Amar, Shmuel says, I feel a maximum of your sister, I'm Shmuel says, no. Even in that place, you're going to be chayev. The animal that eats it, the owner's going to be chayev to pay for those fruits. So the Gemara explains, Lema bebar b'shusay kamifugi. Now, this is taking us into another machlekes. There's a machlekes about hifke reshusay v'le hifke bayre. Let's say someone digs a pit in his own property. He's allowed to dig pits in his property, but he's not allowed to dig pits in public property. But he dug a pit in his own property, and then he gives the property to the public, but he keeps the pit. So he owns the pit, but he doesn't own the property. So now he has a problem. He owns property. He owns a pit, but he's obligated. And it's in a Rishas public. Now the public can, can use it. So is that going to be high? If it's a machlek, it should be shmal and rabbi kiva later on. But what we're going to say now is that Rav holds Chayev. Bar Kosovar, Lema Bish Barbus is correct. Rav Damar Pater, Rav that says that if the animal eats the fruits that are left in the in that public uh, in that patch of land, Rav says that the that the owner is going to be exempt from paying it. Why? Because those fruits are a bar. Someone trips on it, it would be a bar. And what's the rule with the bar? The rule is, is that he would be chayef to pay. Now, what's the rule with if you have things that you put into Rosh Hashanah that could cause damage? The rule is that kol hamachzik behem zacha, whoever takes it, acquires it. Oh, because this is a a, a public, um, <laughs> because this is a public um, the disruption. It's a it's a uh, it could cause damage in a public area. So therefore, anyone is allowed to take it. So therefore, the animal that eats it, the, the owner's potter. Rab says okay. potter because it's a bar b'shos uh, rab. If you chayev, if you chayev, uh, if the owner of the fruits is chayev to pay for the damages, then the owner of the animal is exempt for eating those fruits. And Shmuel Damar Chayev, Shmuel says the opposite. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Shmuel yeah. says that the owner is chayev to pay for those fruits. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the opposite. Uh, yeah, Shmuel says chayv that owners have to pay for those fruits. Why? Kosava barber should say potter. He holds that you're actually exempt because that was put there with legally, and so you're going to be exempt from paying for that part. Okay, we think we have it figured out. Amalach Rav. Now the problem is, is that's machlekes this concept of bar hifke reshusay v'lay hifke bayrei. When you make your property uh, it's, uh, ownerless, but you keep the bar. That's a machlek of Shabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. And Rav and Shmuel both do not want to be only on one side. They want to say that my opinion could fit with both of them. So I'm a lach Rav. Rav would say to you, Leila Meimalach, really, I can tell you, Dalma, that in that machlek is back to Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva, Barbara should say his potter. The truth is, is that really it could be he's exempt. He left the fruits there and it was legal to leave the fruits there because he owned it at that time. Shani Hacha, but over here it's different. Why over here does the um, is the person that ate the, the animal that ate the fruits the owner? Why is the owner of the animal exempt? It would have been potter if it would have caused damage. 
Shani Hacha Damala the Amar. Over here it's different. He says, Lav Kol Kaminach the Mekavas Lo Lepere Secha the Shusher Abim Mekavas Lo Leteroi. He says that it's your fault. You see, and now we have we're we're being introduced to a leniency in a shame shame b'shus and is in consumption in a, in a, in the damage these property that there is a claim that the owner of the animal can say why did you put your fruit so close to the edge so even though it's still in his even position, though it's in his, still in his possession you shouldn't have put him so close to that we didn't we never heard this exemption that before would, that, in other words that's like also cause for yeah yeah <clears throat> so but what Rav is saying is the reason why he's exempt the reason why he's exempt is because he has a little claim that he says you put your fruit too close to the edge. Shmuel, Amar Shmuel, that said that you're going to be chayev if he eats the fruits. He says, Bialma The truth is that even though this is a considered a a, um, a, uh, a public uh, area with the bar, and you'd be chayev for the damage, and really you should be allowed to take it. However, the Bishlaim Abar, when it comes to a pit, you could say that why Yechayev, if someone gets damaged in, in, in an actual pit, say that maybe the ox didn't see the pit and you made the, the your area a Rosh and now people are falling into the uh, the thing, the people are falling into the pit that you dug before you made it to Hefker. Elapeiris, but when it comes to fruits, can you say? That this animal didn't realize the fruits are there and it's considered a bar. Obviously, the animal knows the fruits. So not only did he see them, he ate them. So, but when it comes to the pit, we'll say that the reason why you're chayev is because the animal didn't see it. So who's going to be chayev here? The one that, that that dug it. But when it comes to the fruits, you can't claim that those fruits are are a pit because the animal saw it. If anything happens, it's the animal's fault. It ate it. So Gemara said, okay, so those are possibilities how they can go, they can accept the other side when it comes to making your property ownerless and nevertheless still say that if the animal eats the fruits on that property, chayev or pater, depending on Rav and Shmuel, however they want to pull it. Let's say that this machlekes regarding machseres, turning the head, oh, chayim san. The Mazel Tov Chaim. Uh, let's say that um, Machzeres is a is a Machlekes, a much earlier Machlekes. The Tanya was taught in a Brisa. Oh, oh, thank you, you, thank you. Ah, ah. Nachas. Um, oh, let me tell you, if he eats from the um, from the in the main street, right? Mishlemes Mashenenes. He doesn't have to pay for the da- for the damage. He only has to pay for the benefit that he got. Remember that there's a difference between paying for damage or paying for benefit. Paying for benefit is basically another way of saying that he's potter. Uh, Shane, when an animal consumes in a public area, um, he doesn't have to, the owner of the animal doesn't have to pay for it. The fruits weren't supposed, weren't supposed to be in the public area. It's his right. fault, whatever. But he still has to pay for mash and he still has to pay for what the enjoy. for what he enjoyed. Um, if it eats from the side, then Mishalamis Mashizik has to pay for the damage. That's the words of Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda have one opinion. And Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda say that it's not the way to eat, it's only the way to walk. Now, say that it's not the way to eat, it's only the way to walk. Now, that sounds like, that sounds like, is that it's Karen. It's it's uh, when it does eat. It's unclear what it's, what's going on over here with Rabbi and uh, and Rabbi Lazar, but it sounds like it's Karen. It's Mishun. It's a strange thing that it did, and therefore you'd have to pay half price. That's what right. it sounds like. <clears throat> but whatever the case is, the Gemara understands that um, Rabbi Yisi and Tanakama, both of them say that Yechayev on the side of the street, right, on the side of the the road. That's mm-hmm. what they're both saying. The Gemara answer is, It must be that they're arguing about machzeres. When it turns mm-hmm. its head, the animal is in the street, turns its head to the side. Tanakama holds that machzeres 
is not considered the side of the street, it's considered in the main street. And Rabbi Yesi says, no, that's already considered uh, the side of the street and he has to pay it like that. Rabbi says, no, you just created a machlekes tanoim between four of the five of the five students in, of Rabbi Akiva. Remember the five students? Uh, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Lassar. The only one that's not here is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai. But you basically created a mach- the, the machlekes is there. But you, you turned it into a machlekes regarding machseris. It's two and two. This one says machseris is chayiv. This one says machseris is father. It says loy. The kuliyama machseris. Really, at machseris, when it turns its head, it's in the main street. It turns its head to the side. Ikaravit kishmol. That could go either way. We're not even going to get into it. You can pull it however you want. Over here, it's a different machlekes. It's much more general. One opinion holds that when it says in the pasuk that. An animal that consumes in the damagee's property is stay acher in someone else's field. Beer means it consumes with its mouth. Someone else's field. But not in the public area. Okay. Marsa, the other opinion holds, will be here stay acher. It consumes in a in a, the other person's field. That means in Rishus Rabbim, he's going to be chayev. It's only in Rishus Hamazik that he would. Let me explain that. Uh, Rishus Hamazik means that there's a guy that owns an animal. And he has his animal uh, uh, tied up in his uh, yard. And it comes along a guy that owns produce and puts it in the yard of the animal. What happens if he puts it right next to it? Like, like in the uh, anyway, he puts it too close, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just a mazik. Puts it in the yard of the animal. So over there, you're going to be exempt. Over there, you're going to be exempt. That's just a ma- So when it says in someone else's field, it means someone else's field, not in your field. If you he, if he put it in your field, you're going to be putted. The Gemara says, but just a mazik. I need a pasuk to tell me that you're going to be exempt if an animal eats the fruits that are in your field. Just like someone putting food in your refrigerator and you ate it uh, when you came home at night. And they, they say, hey, you owe me. So why, why do you leave it in my fridge? So the animal, by the way, is like uh, the whole, everything is like this fridge, you know. So uh, <laughs> you can't charge them for that. Uh, it's, I don't need a pasuk to tell me that you're exempt from paying because someone put food in your own property and your animal ate it. Ella, the ilfa rabeshi kibinayo. The Gemara now says, this goes back to what we learned yesterday, uh, last night. It was a discussion about if an animal eats off the back of another animal in the public property, is that considered private property or is that considered public property? <laughs> and then we had another uh, option. Um, it could be that even if it's considered public property, but it could be considered abnormal for it to do that, to eat off the back of another animal. So it could be it's hive over there as well because it's a shina, because it's a change. Right. Anyway, what we're saying now is Rabbi Yaisi would hold <coughs> that it's not considered normal for it to eat off the back. Um, and so therefore you would be chayev because that would be shin a karen in rishus rabim, and the other opinion would hold that you're exempt in the rishus rabim. Anyway, that's we, we took what looked like a mitai um, charechava is mashenalemis mashenenes. We we threw in another uh, another scenario over here. That when it's in the middle of the street, but there is another animal there, and it eats off the back of the other animal, so the Reb Meir and Rabbi Yehuda would say you're exempt. Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Lazar would say that you're high. Okay. We have the new Gemara. Excuse me, quick yeah. question. Yeah. It, it seems like so far in this parak, there are really two big ideas. One is whether it's natural for the animal to do what it's been doing, and the other is whether you're on private or public property. And the right. discussion seems to come up when you're sort of at the edge of those ideas, like when the animal is standing in public property and reaches over and eats a, something that's on private property. Right, right. But it really, uh, it really boils down to the one idea of your obligation, your responsibility to be guarding your animal um, from going into someone mm-hmm. else's property. Or... And your responsibility to guard your own property. So and your responsibility. Right. Right. doesn't do it. That's right. Yeah. So it's it really who's at fault. 
<laughs> what if the fruit is spoiled? The animal gets sick. That is going to be later. It's going to come up if this if it's spoiled. If the animal gets sick, yeah. what if the guy's going to say who told your animal to eat? He's not going to have to pay for the 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 that oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, bills. Yeah. What if it's people eat it? The animal, let's leave the animals out. It's humans that eat it. I'm thinking of a big farmer. He puts. It invents something and puts it in the public domain, or unless you're obliged to eat it, but they eat it by choice, and he gets sick. Right, and they don't know that it was in there. Yeah, it's not know. like he can say, just you should have known, you should have smelt that the fish was rotten. But it was okay. sprayed so it smelled nice. They made it. Right, right. Well, that's, well, that's to learn more. That's, 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 that's interesting, because we have the Takanas of Yehoshua, which says that property rights are not absolute. So right. You know, people have sort of the right from time to time to go on someone else's property, and that's what I would think makes this all complicated. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. That's going to come up also in this Masechta in uh, in Meruba. We have the um, the ten institutions, right? Okay, so the Mishnah now says, "A dog or a goat that jump off a roof, and you know if they jump off a roof." They could fall on something, and uh, or they could jump on something, and they could break something. You know, when they trample on something, they have to pay. If it's not in a public property, if it's in the if it's in the private property, they jumped off a roof into someone's private property, and um, the goats jump a lot. Then on this farm, on Ray's farm, there was a goat there. Yeah, Medallia. There was a, a goat. They called it Geometry. That was the name of this goat. And, uh, it could jump through like the most small thing. And it was anyway, they, when they closed because it kept getting out of the with the, the barn or whatever. So they closed it up. It died when they closed up the, the things. It, it's like its whole life was hunting. <laughs> the pre, uh, animals get depressed. Or something. But anyway, um, it jumped off. It jumped off the roof and it broke vessels. You have to pay Nesek Shalom. Why do you have to pay full price? Because it was in the private property. And uh, it's called, considered regal. If it tramples on something in a, in a private property, you have to pay. But they say more than because that's what the animals do. A kelif, not the harara. Yeah. Kid is a goat. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kid. Kid. Somehow, maybe Gidi, a kid, okay, maybe that comes from the same uh, etym etymology or something. Um, definitely goat comes from Gidi, goat and Gidi. A camel comes from Kam uh, Gamal. So a Kelev Shnatpel Harara, a dog that took a piece of cake. We had this Gemara, we quoted it before. The problem is the bottom of the cake had a coal that was attached to it because they used to bake the cake straight on the coals. When you would lift it up, you would you would have to cut off the coal on the bottom. So, but he took this cake with the coal on the bottom. <coughs> she goes to a haystack to eat it, and Achalacharara eats the cake. but the haystack starts on fire. He has to pay for the cake. but on the haystack, Mishalim has to pay half price. We're going to see why it's half price. Okay, let's see. Taima the kafzu. What's the reason why? When the animals jumped off the roof and they broke you vessels that were underneath, that's because it jumped. Ah, uh, not flew, but let's see it was on the roof and it fell off. Potter is exempt from paying. Alma, because when it fell off, that's considered an accident. That was not something that you expected. Alma, we see Kasavar that this uh, Mishnah holds, the fact that you let it go on the roof and it was able to jump off is already a problem because if it can jump off and jump onto the utensils, then you should have not let it go up because you know what animals do. But you did let it go up. And then instead of jumping off, it fell off. So you say, oh, uh, it was a total accident. There was an accident only because you let it go up there. It started with negligence. It started right. with negligence and it turned into an accident. Um, it's, it's, apparently, it would be Pater, even though it started with negligence because the end was an uh, accident. 
It reminds me of the uh, the guy on the trip. The, the guy, his wife sent him to the store to buy milk. And uh, on the way, he uh, sees a friend. His friend he says, what's going on? He says, I'm going on a trip to gonna make a lot of money. He says, oh, I'll come along. He goes along. Anyway, a year later, he comes back. And um, and uh, he says, I, I forgot. My wife sent me to get milk. So he goes to the store to get milk. And uh, he's going home. He's rushing home to, with the milk. Anyway, he strips and at the doorstep and he spills some milk on the floor. He says, see, you should never rush. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, something like that is going on over here. It was a nineness. It was clearly negligence the whole time. But at the end, it was, it was a nineness. Okay, Tanya Nami Hachi. It was taught in a brisa the following. A dog and a kid or a goat that jumped off the roof. A shavras a kelim they broke vessels. Mishal and Mezik have to pay full price exactly like our Mishnah. But the brisa adds in not flu peturim that if they fell off their exam. Okay. Now the Gemara elaborates. It says, "Hani chalaman damar." This works well according to the opinion that holds tchilas b'bshiyav v'seif v'nis pater. That's something that begins with negligence and ends with. Um, unforeseeable circumstance. What was the word, Shalom? Is that how you said it? Unforeseeable. How did you translate Dinas? Unpreventable. Unpreventable circumstance is Pater. Then it works out well. Elamanda Mechayev, but there's another opinion. It's Machlaikas. Where is it in Hamafkid? I think. It's Machlaikas. And one opinion says that you're on that because you started with negligence. Maya Kalamema, how are you going to explain that, Brysa? My answer is going to Makarvi Kalam Magabi Kaisel. The vessels were directly against the wall. So when the animal climbs up the wall and you're concerned that maybe the animal is going to jump, which the animals always do that, they always jump. So it wouldn't have fallen on the vessels anyway, because when it jumps, it doesn't go directly scratch its back against the wall and break right. the ones that are right down there in the corner by the wall. It right. would jump ahead. It would miss right. those vessels. So it wasn't considered negligence from your part. And that's what we'll explain to Bryce that the, the, the whole... Um, there was no negligence here. The whole thing was tinnitus. When it went up, that was fine that it went up. And when it fell, that was tinnitus. So we adjusted the case to make it fit with that opinion. Uh, I skipped the words. When it jumps, it's not going to fall on it. It's not even considered starting with negligence. Because the kalim were, were not never in a potential to be hit. Right, the, the, the kalim were oh, were not in a danger zone. But that whether there's kalim or not is it? No. 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 So you, the the um. It's what you shouldn't be letting your animal there if it's going to. Yeah. Amr Rav Sivdus made the Rav Rav says the name of Rav Pam Shafilu Nafilu Nam Michayev. It's possible. That even if it falls, even if the animal falls off the roof, it's still going to be higher for the damage that it causes, even though that's an accident. Why? When the wall was uh, was a shaky wall. So then it's considered, um, obviously, because but even Saifa is also right. Shia. When it falls, it's uh, also good. My new, what is this, the case? Because you should have been concerned that maybe the bricks from the wall are going to fall off when it goes up there. Right. But one second, the bricks did not fall. What actually fell? The animal. We're back to the same story. Why are you telling me that you would be chayev? It depends. That's the same achlekes. Like tzricha bekaisel tsar, my answer is that the case would be if the wall is very narrow, that the falling is not considered an inus, the falling is considered a pshia, because it's so narrow that the animals do fall off that straight. Down. Yeah. Tanur Rabbanan was taught in a brisa. Kelav agdi shedolgo mi matal a dog and a goat that jumped from the floor and up. Turin, that's and they break vessels, they're exempt because they usually jump down, they don't jump up, they climb up and jump down. On the other hand, if they jumped from on top down, chayavin, that's what they uh, that's what they like to do, and so that would be chayav nezak shalem. But when it says pater, the is soon going to say that it means it's only chatzi nezak, 
because that's any anything atypical is chatsi nesek is half price. An animal or a chicken that jumped from on top down or from down up, they're going to be higher because that's people do that. Now, uh, I people don't do that. So the answer is, is that, so what? People are higher, whatever they do, uh, whether it's normal or not normal, uh, you're always other mood, a person's always higher. And chickens jump all, all over the place. <clears throat> but Tanya... So in a Braisa, we have a question in a Kelavagdish Dalgo, a a dog or a goat that jumped, Bain Mulmaila Mat, Bain Mulmata Lamaila Pturin. They jump from on top down or below up your potter. So how does that work? You told me in the Mishnah and you told me in the Braisa that they jumped down. That's not something normal. That they did the opposite of what they normally do. Kalba Bizakira. The dog jumped. The Gadya Bistricha. And the goat climbed. Usually the dog climbs and the goat jumps. But over here, it did it the opposite way. So when it says, it must be saying that the gdi was the one that jumped. And uh, Shadalgo, I guess, could be translated differently. Either it means that it jumped really or it was doing the climbing. Um, so then why is it Potter? It should be at least Chatzinezek. So it says Potter Minezek Shalom, but Chayav Chayav Mechatzinezek. It is Chayav. It's Chayav Chatzinezek. When it said Potter, it meant it was exempt from full payment, but it's Chayav. Okay. The next Gemara is quite a famous Gemara. Um, there's even uh, there's some Sichas that Rebbe talks about um, and the Tisha B'Av Sicha about, uh, about this. Famous uh, run on this. Famous run. Okay, let's see this. Gemara. It says, Hakelev Shanatal, we're talking about the animal, the, the, the dog that took the piece of cake. Itmar was stated by Amiram, there's a machlaikas. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Rabbi Yechanan's opinion is, someone lights a fire. In the fire that he lit, of course, he lit it uh, in his, his property. But the wind took it over to his neighbor's property and it burnt over there. So that he has to pay for what it damaged in the neighbor's property. What was the name of the lady with the in Chicago or the oh, anyway. that whole story? This is O'Leary. Mrs. O'Leary. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so it burns down the uh whatever. Mrs. O'Leary left the lantern of the show, the cow takes it over. So oh, she knows why, the poem. Why is uh, Mrs. Aleri uh, Chayev? Because um, it's as if she shot an arrow. Just like when a person shoots an arrow and it damages, what, what are you going to claim? Uh, I didn't do it. It was my arrow. So no, your arrow is you. It's, it's an extension of you. It's like a long... Yeah, the... <clears throat> it's your action. Rishlaka says no. Mrs. Aleri is Chayev. It's considered your money. Now, <clears throat> like yeah, the Arif. yeah, it would be like some something like that. Yeah, there. Now, but Reish Lakis has a different. He says it's like your money, and you're responsible to guard your 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 ox. You're responsible to guard your possessions. It's considered one of your possessions. This fire is considered your possession, and so therefore, it, uh, your possession went around and damaged in the the rest of the city of Chicago. So you're going to be high. Okay, the the, the um the thought process throughout the Gemara is that if it's not your um, fire, for example, the dog takes a torch from someone else, here it takes a piece of cake with a coal on it, so that's not considered your money. So according to Reish Lakish, you should be exempt because you're only responsible for your money. But this this fire wasn't yours. According to Rabbi Yechanan, it's, it's your it's arrow. Your... It's your arrow. You put the fire there. But according to um, Reish Lakish, you didn't own the fire. The, the dog took the fire, and it belongs to the person that had the coals. Okay, that's what we think at the beginning, and as we go through the Gemara, it's it's going to switch. But Reish um, Lakish, my time, Rabbi Yechon. Why doesn't Reish Lakish say like Rabbi Yechonan? Amalach, he says, of Your arrow goes because you shot it. You didn't shoot the fire. The fire, the wind was came in. I don't consider it your arrow. Hi, love Mikoichel Castle. This doesn't go because of you. You you shot it. Rabbi Yechonan, on my time, I am a Kriyish Lakish. Why doesn't Rabbi Yechonan say that Kriyish Lakish? You should have to guard your possessions. Amalach Mamanis be Mamasha. 
your possessions have some substance to it. Hi, let's be mamasha. This flame doesn't have any substance. Just these gases that uh, there's no substance to that. What is a flame? What is uh, in physics? What is the flame? Just gases that, uh, like, what, 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 what exactly is that? Okay, whatever. Um, Tanan. <clears throat> I mean, there's heat all around it. And what, what is the, what, why is the flame uh, different than everything? It's a, it's a fire that burns in the Hasid's heart. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't put it on the on your physics test though. <laughs> the fire that burns in the chassid's heart. Okay, Tanan, we'll start in the Mishnah. <coughs> I kill atomic bomb testing. Right, I blow something up here, and the wind takes it all right. over the earth. That would be, that would be uh, similar. Yeah. Yeah. They did that in the, the deserts. They did the it was the desert. Yeah, but the, the sky takes it and it's all over strontium 90 or come down from it. But right. uh, you drink the milk that was um, given by the cow that ate the grass that received strontium 90 from the bomb testing. Uh -huh. Almost yeah. hot guy. Right. So Tanan, I was sudden in the mission that we're going to back, we're going to ask a question on Rishlakish. Ask a few questions on Rishlakish here. Akel Shnatal Harara. The dog took the the cake. Okay. And he burnt the haystack. If you say, why is he chayav for the goddess? Remember, we said he's chayav on the goddess. We said half price. So chitza of the kelavu. It's the it's the arrow of the dog. Elamanda, so that's why he has to pay for the Gaddish. Elamanda Meshim Shimamainai, but according to the opinion that says that it's his money, I Aishlav Mamani de Bal Kalafu. This fire did not belong to the dog. It belonged to the guy that yeah, was baking fire. the cake. Amalachri Shlakish, Shlakish, response to Yachemai Skin and Dadi Adir. We're talking about here where he threw it. Now, what you gain by that is that we have so now, no <clears throat> we have, no, we have a dog, but the dog threw it. <laughs> It works like this. Look, on the charara, on the cake, he has to pay full price because he ate it. That's a shame. He ate it. On Makam Gachelas, where the where the coal lands, Mishalim Chasinas, he has to pay half price. Why does he have price? Because when when you throw something, it's considered like Shreiras, the owner of the dog. The dog threw it. Now, the owner of the dog has to pay half price for the place that got burnt where the, where the coal landed. Well, God is cooler, but on the whole haystack, he's put there. So what Rishlakish just did here is he figured out a way of getting a chatzinezek in here because he threw it. And he it then says that you're exempt, actually, on the whole he haystack. Goes, he didn't the yeah, he goes, right. This is part of Rabbi Yechanan, according to Rabbi Yechanan, how does he learn this? He says, the dog didn't throw it. The dog put it down. On the, on the cake, the and on the place where he put it, he has to pay Nezek Shalim. And on the rest of the goddess, you have to pay Chatsi Nezek. Why do you have to pay Chatsi Nezek? Because um, Somehow it's considered it, Shreyas. The rest of the goddess is considered Shreyas. His koichai, his power. It's not the original. No, it's like like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tashima. Come and listen. A gamal. A camel. Ton pishton. Should we leave it over here? Should we go on? I'll go through it. It says, Hagamal ton pishton. If you have a camel that's loaded with flags, these wide loads. He's going in the public property. His load is so wide that it goes inside a store as he's going by. It looks like it would probably knock over like the, the push the push carts. Remember the push cart war? Anyway, it goes by and it goes actually enters into the store and and it gets caught on fire by the the, the candle that was inside the store. And he lights the whole store on fire. Bal Gamal Chayev, don't have the camel has to pay. However, but if the storekeeper kept his candle outside, Chenveni Chayev, 
then that's his fault. He put his candle outside. Rabbi Daimon, Rabbi Da says, "Bin Chanaka Potter." If it's in Chanaka candle, then he had the rights to put it outside, and it's going to be exempt. If we say that the, the fire is considered the arrow, it's of the gamalu, so it's the camel that shot the arrow. And that's why the owner of the camel has to pay. If it's the possession, if it's because you have to guard your possessions, this fire was not the possession of the camel, it's the possession of the store. Why does he have to pay? Over here, we're not talking about that the that, uh, that the, the fire continued and it traveled and it traveled. And we, and we have a question, is it your money or is it your arrow? No, we're talking about over here where the camel lit the whole store on fire because it was so wide, it actually went over to it and lit each part of the store on fire with the fire that's burning on its back. Masech is kalabira kula. So when do we have this machle? Because that's only if it travels. But over here, it was actually lighting it directly. Yachim is safe, it says one second. If the candle is outside, the storekeeper has to pay. Why does the storekeeper have to pay? If the animal go, walks around the store doing that, then then it's the it's the it's the camel's problem. No, it stood still. This is a little hard for me to understand because just like an animal, a cow has a nature. Fire has a nature which is to spread. Right. And th that's why it's so dangerous because you can't control it once it starts. Right. Now, when it spreads, oh, it starts. when it spreads, um, what is that response? How does that responsibility come on you? Is it because it's your action or it's because you were supposed to be watching your, your fire? Say that again, please. Is it because of your action? And, the, and lighting, lighting the match? No, but when it's when you light the match and you light something, that's directly your action. But when yes. it spreads, how does that relate? How does that come back to you that you're now responsible for that? Is that considered an extension of your action, which is Rabbi Yechanan? Or is yeah. it, let me tell you the Gemara's Maskana, we'll clarify. The Gemara's Maskana is if a, per, if a person lights a fire and it causes damage to another person because it spreads, does he have to pay for Dalit Dvarim? For Nezek Tsar Shevis Ripibashis, as if he punched him, and he has to pay for all of that? Or is it considered his ox caused damage and he only has to pay for the damage itself? Mm. You, you follow? I mean, there is, but right now we're not, we don't know that, that distinction. Right now we're thinking that the difference is that is it your money and it depends who owned the fire beforehand. That's what we're thinking is the difference. Okay, so the Gemara says, he's for standing still. I'm the Vesichcha Kalshkin the Chenveni Pater. For sure, the chenveni is pater. The the animal lift lit the whole place on fire. Bal gamal chayav. Amar avuna bar manayich mishpeder avikach ma'askin kensha amda lahatul meima. You see, there is an owner over here with the camel. The the owner was supposed to be moving the camel away. The problem is that the camel decides at this point that it needs to urinate, and right when it's lit, lit on fire and he wants to move the uh, the camel, and it's considered. That because it's a, you can't move the camel when it's in the middle of urinating, so it's considered uh, like an inus on his side. He's not able to move it. The Gemara says, "Reisha uh, bal gamal chayev." At the beginning, at the first case where the where the fire was inside the store, so the owner of the camel is chayev. Why is he chayev? Because he wasn't supposed to load it up so much. That was his problem. That it ended up going into the store. Say for chenveni chayev. But in the safe, uh, the the Henry, the storekeeper is higher because he wasn't supposed to put his candle outside. And so, what this has to do with, um, oh, the only thing that we're gaining over here is that we don't say that it's his responsibility to move it, even though the candle was outside. It was because he wasn't able to move it because it decided to urinate right when it catches on fire. Okay, let's leave it over okay. here. Have a good Shabbos, everyone. Good Shabbos. We're on the right daft. I think. <laughs>